I'm Galzira. I am bringing you a quick core stability 101 workout today. The intention of this workout was actually inspired by a friend of mine who um, recently had her first kiddo. I apologize for the cat. He's unpredictable and he may wander in front of the camera. No extra charge for that entertainment. Um, but my friend um, was thinking of finding some way to re-strengthen her core, lumbar, pelvic area after childbirth. So this is not a postnatal specific workout, but um, after the appropriate healing time, this would be a good workout just to re-strengthen um, after delivery, after an abdominal surgery, or just anyone that wants to strengthen their core. Um, just a couple quick nitpicky things. Core is not just your abdominals. Core is everything from your rib cage to your mid thigh, front, back, and sides. So this routine, I'm gonna shut up soon and actually do it because I wanna keep it around 10 minutes and make it easy for you to get it in, hopefully three times a week every other day. Um, and that will really help to tighten up all the muscles, front, back, side, that can help keep your ribs, thoracic, lumbar, pelvic, um, sacral area nice and lined up. This will help prevent back injuries. It will just make you stronger through your midsection, through your trunk, and have better posture from the um, pelvis up. So without further ado, we will run through these exercises. I have five of them for you. I'll offer a couple progressions, so if you've been doing it a while and it gets easy, you'll have room to grow. So we will start lying on our backs. Now, you do not have to get down on the floor for this. If that's difficult or you have no space, use your bed. It's a little easier with a firm surface, but bed works just fine if you need to. So let's start lying on our backs, knees bent. This is a pelvic tilt. So if you have a normal lumbar curve, there is a little bit of space between your low back and the mat. So this exercise helps strengthen your lower abdominals and your glutes. What we want to do is squeeze lower abs and buttocks, and we're basically pushing the back down, tilting and holding. So those muscles build some endurance and relax. This one's tricky. This is the hardest exercise to think about. Another way to think about it, if you've ever had a dog or a friend with a dog, when they get scared, they tuck their tails under. That's what we're doing here. Or my favorite analogy <laughs> that I use all the time, if you had a big bowl of popcorn on your lap, you want to tilt so the popcorn rolls towards your mouth. I am very popcorn motivated. So this is number three where we're just tilting, holding five or 10 seconds and relax. Let's do seven more. So tighten your stomach, tighten your buttocks, tilt and hold. So you're pulling your belly button down towards the mat. You're tilting your tailbone up and you're pushing the small of your back flat down and relax. It's the opposite of arching. So you're not arching, you're going the opposite way. Tilt, hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got five more, I believe. Tilt and hold. So you're just tensing the muscles again, lower abs. So not so much up here, your pretty six pack muscles. Those are nice, they're not as functional. We wanna get the lower abs, so kind of in the front of the pelvis and the buttocks and relax. Four more. Tilt, push the small of the back down, tilt that popcorn towards you. <laughs> and relax. Good, you got three left. Tilt. So if you get any pain with this, play around with the amount of effort you're using. So if it hurts the low back to go maximum effort, go ahead and relax. Just tighten up about 50% of what you could do. Okay, we got, I believe, two more. Tilt down, hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Two more. Tighten, push the small of the back down, tilt the tailbone. This one, you're not lifting. We're gonna do the bridge next, but you're not lifting your hips up yet. Nine, 10, and relax. We got one more, remember that space, make it disappear. 
push down. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. So that's your pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt. Anterior is arching, but for stability, we want to go the other way. Good. All right, so we're moving on to the bridge. So this time we will lift the hips, but make sure you tighten those lower abs first so your back stays nice and stable. And then with your feet fairly close into your buttocks, about hip width apart, you're going to push the arms down into the mat, tighten the abs, start to lift. Even if you're just going a couple inches off of the mat, as it gets easier, you can push up further and then slowly lower. Don't just collapse, come down with control. Keep everything stable and relax. Good. So pelvic tilt before you lift. Lift up as high as you can without pain. You can have the arms down if you want. Squeeze the glutes and then slowly lower. This one, especially getting the abdominals to kick in first, is a great back stabilizer because go ahead and lift again, tilt the pelvis because you're getting your abs working with your buttocks, working with your quads, your hamstrings, your lumbar muscles, and slowly lower. Good. So you can speed these up. We're going slow in case this is brand new to you. So you get the technique. And remember, even if you go up part way, if you're feeling the work, then you've got it. So if you've done these exercises for weeks and they get too easy, what you can do is come up and hold at the top. If you're a beginner, just keep doing the slow repetition. I'm just showing you some options. You can start playing around with trying to keep your pelvis level and then adding some movement. So lifting one knee, slowly lowering, lifting the other knee. Just the general guideline, my friends, is don't compromise your technique, especially the core stability, because we're trying to get everything in alignment and we're trying to educate your muscles to work together properly. So this would come later on. If you need more, you could also play with knees out to the side and back in. You could bend your knees further, come up onto your toes. So those are just options to make it harder if you need more challenge as you get better at this. Good. And if you're a beginner, hopefully you have just been doing your basic bridge this whole time. And now your glutes are fatigued, hopefully. All right, we're gonna move on. We're going into a plank. Don't be scared, there are modifications. Planks are a gold standard of core stability because they work many different muscle groups. You've got options. You can be on your elbows or hands. Please leave your knees down if you're new to it. So you can come up just into kind of a push-up position and work on holding, or you can be on your elbows. There's not one better than the other. If you have wrist problems, elbows definitely is probably more gentle on that. If you need more, either position, lift the knees and just hold. So try to put weight equally between your shoulders and your feet. You want to keep your back with its normal, natural curves. So as you can see, around forward a little at the shoulders, that's our normal kyphotic curve. And then in a little bit at the lumbar spine, that is our normal lumbar lordosis. Just don't let it exaggerate. Don't let the hips sag. Try not to have the butt way in the air. Good. So knees down if you need to modify. We're doing two more of these. And you hold as long as you can without pain. Go ahead and come up again, whatever version you're doing. So knees down. You could have the hands here. Find what works for you. And if I'm holding it too long for you, my spyglass, then feel free to modify, come down, take breaks a little sooner. Good, we're gonna do one more. And again, try to tighten those lower abdominals. Do a little bit of a pelvic tilt before you even lift. Make sure your elbows or hands are right under your shoulders. If they're too far forward, backward, or out, you can hurt your shoulders, so please don't. Whew, I did a pretty big hit workout before filming, so I am feeling it. 
Good. So there's your planks. Um, if you're new to this, leave that as is. I'm just going to show you real quick if you need more later on a side plank where you're coming up onto knees and elbow. You can add the arm overhead if you get really good at it. Have the feet staggered, lift up, or even the feet stacked, or even the top leg up. Um, so we'll just do one on each side again. If you're brand new, don't worry too much about it or just stick with this one. I don't advocate too much for a side plank up on the hand. You can, it's fine. You really gotta be careful of that shoulder. Balance is tricky. I don't want you to accidentally fall and subluxate your shoulder or tear a rotator cuff. So I prefer just to be safe and teach you to do it with the elbow down. One, two, three, four, five. Remember knees down if you need to modify. Eight, nine, 10. We gotta get the other side. Elbow right under your shoulder, coming up onto your knees or your feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, if you get good at this, lift the leg. Nine, 10. Super. Good. Okay, we've got two more exercises. This next one is called the bird dog. You want to be on all fours. So, to start, if you're new, basically your biggest challenge will be to keep your back straight. So keep that normal curvature, don't let it sag too far, don't let it round. Hands under shoulders, so not out, not in. Knees under hips, so not like this, not like this. And let's start by lifting one arm. So you pick which side and you're just lifting straight up as much as you can without bending your elbow too much. If you're tight, you're going to end up deviating probably out to the side. So just try to be mindful to keep the thumb up, keep your elbow straight, and keep the arm as straight as you can. And basically, you just want to keep your torso as nice and still as you can. So I could set my hot cup of black coffee on your upper back and you wouldn't spill it, right? So we can do arms. We're gonna do legs, and then of course we'll put them together eventually. So weight a little more towards the upper body, straighten one leg. We're lifting not too high, I don't want your back to arch. So even if you're just lifting a little bit, we're gonna lower and switch. So straight knee, lift from the glute, and lower, switch. There he goes, he is wild today. I don't know if you have cats, if you have indoor cats, do they get more wild when it's a beautiful sunny day outside? Mine does. If it's rainy, he's sleepy. Good. So keep your back straight. Try not to let it arch too much. So if you need more challenge, my friends, this next time we're going to lift opposite arm, opposite leg. If you try to lift on the same side, you'll probably tip over. So I've got my right arm and left leg straight, ready to go. I'm lifting and holding, and then bring it down and switch. So again, keep it just to arms one at a time, or just to legs if you're new. If you have a mirror nearby, that's really helpful. Take a glance just to make sure that your form is good, that you don't have more curve in your back than your normal lumbar lordosis. So if I had a yard stick, I could lie, your, lie it right along the length of your spine, right? And it wouldn't move. That's what we're going for. So again, this is called bird dog or pointer because you're, I guess it's <laughs> the posture of a sporting dog. I found the partridge, it's right over there. But a really good one, both for coordination and core stability. Let's do one more each side and then I'll show you the last exercise. So we have already worked abdominals, the sides of the abs, the glutes, the low back. We're gonna really hit the side of the hips. So your other glutes, your glute med. We got three glute max, min, medius. Kind of like Goldilocks and the three bears, there's different sizes. All right, so we're gonna to come to our side. Use a pillow if you need to for your neck. We're gonna stack the hips over each other. We want them bent about 90. We want the knees bent about 90. 
top arm for balance. This is called a clamshell. Your ankles will stay together. <laughs> Don't mind the cat lurking in the background. Your knee will come up. So you're gonna just lift that top knee. Clamshell opens and then lower. It looks really easy, but you will feel it if you're doing it right. So the way people accidentally cheat is by letting the whole pelvis rock. You get the knee up higher and you're like, oh, that's not hard. But if you want the full effect and to really isolate that muscle and get more stable, you gotta make sure your pelvis stays still. So you can even put that top arm on the pelvis, make sure it's not rolling backwards. And that will turn this exercise into a brutal boot camp for this outer hip. So working the outer fibers of your glute max, your external rotators, also your glute med, your hip abductors. Don't mind all these technical terms, that's just my profession. Good. Let's just do a couple more. Hopefully you feel the burn. Good. And again, look how slow we're going. So smooth and controlled, focused on quality of movement. We're gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna flip around. So again, knees at 90, hips at 90. Hand on your pelvis to make sure you're not rocking backwards and cheating. Ankles stay together, top knee lifts. Here's the clamshell. And if you needed more challenge later on, you could take a little ankle weight or heck, even like a, um, a hot pack, like a rice sock or one of those like popcorn bags that people heat in the microwave. You could put a little bit of weight on your knee if you need more. Or you can tie a resistance band around the knees. Lots of options. And again, try to keep your abdominals tight. That pelvic tilt movement practice throughout the day. You can, once you get a little better at it and figure out which muscles to contract, whew, then you can jump through the air like a cat. No, you can do it um, just sitting at a red light. You can do it sitting, you can do it standing, just subtle, so people don't even know you're working out your abs when you're just standing there. Good. So we'll do some more core stability workouts in the future, but I wanted to give you guys a good Core Stability 101, so if you do those five exercises and get good at them and keep everything nice and stable, that will go a long way in helping you stabilize your core, prevent back injuries, and just kind of retighten this area so you're nice and solid there um, just because you're deconditioned or you've gone through um, an epic feat like giving birth or surgery. So I hope this is helpful. I am Gal Zero. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you, my friends. Be well and watch out for crazy cats.